he supersedes any kind of human agenda and in those times we have to let him and can I say something to you because of all things the title of what I was going to talk to you about is what I've learned and the title scripture was Psalm 3725 it fits me David said, I have been young, and now I am old. Yet, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. Huh? So, since we want order, I will speak to you. I don't know how long I'm going to speak, but I want to recapture what we've just had here. Because God, you, you can't say you're waiting for a move of God. Let me teach you something here. I'm old now. God's always moving. like a shark they have to continuously move it's up to us to plug in to that movement and we are stubborn creatures huh I have learned that when people do this that means I ain't budging I even know that when I look at some people's faces tells me they ain't moved and God all the while is saying why not how come so you got my title slide what I've learned could you put that picture up for me just so that I can prove to you that I was young once If you're wondering who that guy is with that woman that still looks the same, that was me. I was 23 years old. And I think in 43 years of living for God, I've learned something. So if you will say a prayer with me right now and just give this old guy some time to talk to you. But please do me one favor. Listen. Assimilate. And then begin to move. Father, I thank you so much for your presence, for what you are doing and what you still want to do. So God, help me this morning. Let me speak clearly. And let me instill, I, I hope God, instill in all of these wonderful people some of the lessons that you have taught me. I ask this the name that is above every name the name that is a strong tower that the righteous run into and are safe the name that the Gentiles shall trust God the name of Jesus and everybody says get yourself comfortable I, for one, am well aware of the fact that we are not all the same. However, there's always a however. God and Country has written a song that I like to play a lot, and it's entitled Relate. Any of you heard that song? 
And part of the words go like this. Has life hit you so hard that you've been knocked down? Have you gone too far to find the middle ground? Did they raise you so high just to pull you back down? Have you been so lost you could never be found? Because I've been real, I've been fake. I've been a sinner, been a saint. I've been right, I've been so, so wrong. Yeah, I've made my, my mistakes. I don't know what it's like to be you. You don't know what it's like to be me. What if we're all the same in different kinds of ways? Can you, can you relate? That last portion that I just read, what if we're all the same in different kinds of ways? We are the same. Paul said this to all of you that say you're Christians. Paul said this to the Philippians in the second chapter, the fifth verse. He said, if your relationships or in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. See, when you step over the threshold, when you come into that area of saying you're a Christian, when you have done the requirement of coming in, you are supposed to take on the mind of Christ. Can I get a witness? Amen. So as such, we are all the same in this very, very wonderful way. We have and should have the mind of Christ. But I think a lot of times what happens in a lot of our lives is trouble, trouble, trouble. All of us face trouble. Have you ever said that? Huh? And I'm sure that in here today, in this wonderful crowd, that there are some of you that are facing difficulties. You're facing trials, and these troubles are definitely a part of your life. But can I tell you this? Life without troubles does not exist on planet Earth. You are going to have difficulties, and part of what I'm talking to you about, I've experienced. I've learned that even though things sometimes are going smooth, there is going to be an inevitable bump. It's, it's going to be either something that you didn't see, or maybe it's from all those things you kept sweeping under the carpet. And now that bump got big enough to trip you. Because those are problems that you have not handled or dealt with in your life. David, this Psalm 37 is an incredible psalm. I like it for one. There are some things in the psalm that I always relate to. I always put a part of my prayer. And if I can read to you again verses 23 all the way down to 25... It, it will give you an understanding because David was dealing with a lot of troubling things in the kingdom at the time. And there was prosperity of people that were not so nice. And I think a lot of us at times, we look at those people that prosper that are not so nice, and we say, what about me? I'm a good Joe. I'm a good gal. Why are they? Go get them, God. But David said this, starting at the 23rd verse, he says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And then, I have been young, and now am old, Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed 
begging for bread. You know, when I was younger and when I got into this, when I gave my heart and life to God, when I, when I came in the door and I, I repented of my sins because I wasn't the best of individuals. I remember one time when my wife was talking to an individual and uh, I got the Holy Ghost before her. She said, I, I don't understand why he got it before me. He was rotten. But I did all those things. I repented. I, I, I turned in the direction that God wanted me to go. I forsook those things. I was baptized by total immersion. And see, that wipes the slate clean. I came up out of that water. I felt so good. God had filled me. I was speaking other tongues. And I thought, now, nothing. I'm impervious. Nothing will trouble me. I wanted to see the warranty on what I had uh, kind of bought into. But God never promises any one of us a rose garden. I realized that. I learned that. I learned that life is a test. Life is a test. And God is so gracious but he wants you to be a good individual. He wants you to learn. He wants you to be that individual that believes and trusts and has faith in him. I think so many people get it wrong when they read this scripture and they think that all people are good when they say they believe in God. Huh? Huh? Not everybody out there that says they're a Christian is a Christian. Let me just tell you that. They're not all Christians. They're not all good. They might lead what is termed a moral life. But can I say this? There's a lot of people that have led moral lives that are not going to make it. Romans 3 and 12 says, They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that does good. No, not one. We have to understand this universal teaching that salvation is acquired by all people and that all are eternally secure is not true. It is not true. You can fall out of the grace of God. You can do things that are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ once you give your heart and life to Jesus. You can turn and walk away just like a child can turn and walk away from his family and not be a part of the inheritance. But it's the good man. It's the good woman. It's the good individual that follows God, that understands every word, every sanctioned word in the word of God is for their profit. It's for their life. It's for their understanding. It's for them to lead the life that is like Christ and less like them. Remember, you're supposed to have the mind of Jesus. A good man, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things become new. See, you have to start seeing. I learned that I have to start seeing things differently. Everybody is not out to get me. Everybody really is my friend. Everybody is part of this human family. And that's why we say, our Father, which art in heaven. So, like it or not, I'm your bro, buddy. Those people that are difficult in life, they're part of your family. Those people that 
you don't think really respect you. They're part of the family. And it's contingent on you, I've learned. It's contingent on you to love them and show them how much you love them. We're okay with that scripture in Mark 12 that says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. But we sometimes don't like the next part. Love your neighbor as yourself. Come on, this is a big love fest here this morning. Can you turn to somebody next to you and say, I love you. Turn to somebody across the aisle and tell them, I love you. I've learned that. I've learned that each potential individual that I come in contact with is a person that I have to share that love with. I have to do my best, my dead level best, even when you don't want to do it, even when you don't feel like it, and the best place to practice it is at home. Husbands, do you love your wives? Wives, do you love your your husbands? Oh, I think it's appropriate. Come on, give them a peck on the cheek right now if you're with your spouse. And then children. Children, do you love and respect your parents? I remember growing up, it was beaten to us. I am a, I am a baby boomer. And... As a baby boomer, we were raised to be seen and not heard. That's how we were raised. And I remember my father, if I would look crossways or if I would say something, I'd get cracked in the mouth. I remember at school, the nuns had one of those pointer sticks. You know what I'm talking about. They didn't just use those things to point to lessons. And then they had those big rulers. Remember those big rulers? They didn't use use those things to measure. (laughs) But it was a different time in life. We call it abuse. They called it correction. You know, I learned that God chastens those he loves. I learned that. You can't always say to God, Why? Because God is saying, because. Because you're not listening, because you're not following me, because you're not doing the things that you should be doing, this is the consequence of your decision. It's not a ruler, it's not a pointer. It's just that it's trouble. It's a drag. But God is measuring your response. God is wanting to know how you're going to step up to the plate. And just like Wisconsin, if you do it, stick around a while. The season will change. The weather will change. The temperature will change. If you'll just do the right things. I've learned that. I've learned that. I've learned that my steps, they're really ordered of God. But I can get out of the way of those steps. I can, if God has told me to go in this direction, I can be a Jonah and I can go in this direction. Did you ever go to a store and you see those painted footsteps? St. Luke's, when I go for hospital visits, it wasn't painted. They had lines, blue, yellow, you know. I always thought I knew the better way and I'd get lost and I'd have to go back to the blue line. But just like Jonah, if we do not go in the direction that God asks us to go into, he'll bring along a tempest. He'll bring along some kind of thing that'll knock you or other people off course. And then you'll have to understand, i got to go back to where the starting point was. Or something's going to carry me in that direction. I've learned that. I've learned that. I've learned when I say no to God, he says, oh, you will. You will. 
He'll put you back on the path that he wants you to be on. You might say, well, he'll use somebody else. I found that, no, that's not always the truth. Because, you see, you have not chosen him. He's chosen you. See, Pastor, I'm going to do this again, okay? I, I always used to do this, so I'm going to do it. I can see everybody better this way. I've learned this. In Jeremiah, God said to him, before I formed you, ooh, that's so key, before I, God, formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I ordained you. That means that God has something for you unique. Unique only to you that you should do. And he will keep moving on you, Namjin. He'll keep moving on you until you say, uncle. <laughs> until you give in. We are good at convincing ourselves. I've learned this. I've learned this. We're good at convincing ourselves that I can't do it. It's my personality. It's who I am. I'll take you back to what it just said. Let this mindset, let this attitude, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So don't say I can't because what the Lord is saying is, yes, you can. You have just got to let yourself be more like me and less like yourself. But we, this is what happens in life. I've learned this. We fight so hard against God. We fight what God wants for us in our lives. And all that God wants is nothing but goodness. Huh? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and guess what he'll do? He'll direct your paths. He's also in difficult times your shield and your strength. I've learned that. I've learned it. You know, it wasn't an easy thing raising three children. We had one boy. You know how difficult boys are? You know how much trouble a boy can get into? We had to learn. We had to understand. We had to administer love to our children. We had to administer grace to our children. We had to give at times strength to our children. We had to defend our children. You get in the picture? This is exactly what God does for each and every one of us. He loves us, but like a parent, he knows what's best. He knows which way that we should go. We didn't merely look at our children and say, well, you can grow up any way you want. No, my wife pounded into their heads, they're going to college. Make something of yourself. Guide yourself in these areas. Make sure that you use the brain that has been given you and you've been blessed with. I've learned that God is the same as any parent with their child. But then I look and I look at how parents are in this world. And they're truly not like God. God wants us to understand that he will lead us. He will take care of us. And he will guide each and every one of our steps. 
God enjoys taking care of you as well. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. We don't have to live that kind of a life where we're always crazed and we don't know what the next thing is, because if we put it in the hands of God... God is the one. I've learned that. I've learned that over the years. I've learned that God wants to really take my life and put me in a place where I'll feel peace. Listen, sitting in this building, again, I've testified this to you all. I learned so many times over the past that if I'll just trust God, if I'll just listen to God, if I'll just believe in what God, if I'll just have faith, God will do it. And here we sit. Here we sit in a building that was contrived by God. It was given us by God. All the negotiations were there for God. And all we were All we stood for was a mouthpiece. That's all it was. You're there talking what God is putting inside you, if you'll just believe. I've learned that. I've learned these things and understood more and more and more as I get older and older and older. But I realize that when you're young, when you're young, it's hard to stand still. It's hard to really Give God the time that he so deserves. And I'm not just talking physically young. I'm talking mentally young. Because as you go through life, if you fail the test again and again and again, you stay locked in an immature state. I deal with an individual. I I, I love him dearly, but because of drugs and addiction, he's still at a grade school level, and he's my age. He's my age. You can get locked in that if you don't allow yourself the faith and the tenacity to believe that God can do it. That's why I've learned that when we get into a position like we just were a while ago, to let myself go, start to worship recklessly and Without, without any kind of thought. It's abandoning all of myself, all of my control into his control. And when you do that, when you do that, God begins to clear the fog. God begins to instill in your mind things that you were never, never capable of thinking. I've learned those things. I've learned it. Again, you saw the proof I was young. Now I'm old. 1 John, the first chapter, 8 through 10. Because at times we think we're so perfect, but we do slip. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We're going to goof up. We're going to make a mess. Jeff, I'm not just pointing at you, but I'm just looking at you right now. Jeff, we're going to goof up. We're going to do things wrong because we're human. But he's made a provision for each and every one of us. He's made a provision if we avail ourselves to it. Some of us throw our hands up and we say it's hopeless. And then we continue on down the path that is not going towards God. But God is saying, no, I'll uphold you. I'll hold you up. I'll take care of you 
in these areas. If you'll just open up your heart to me, talk to me, confess to me. We always used to tell our kids, tell us the truth. Because if you don't tell us the truth, the punishment is going to be worse. And they always knew what the bathroom was. Go on in the bathroom. Because we, we were going to apply the board of learning to the seat of education. <laughs> so what God wants is he wants you to understand you are a fallible individual. Don't, don't think yourself so religious that you put your nose up in the air. I've learned that. I've learned to acknowledge my mistakes. I've learned to acknowledge my mistakes before a congregation. Because when you can do that, then you prove that you're in Christ. You're in him. Let me read you something. It comes from Ephesians. It's the first chapter, verses 3 through 14. I'm getting close to coming to an end, but I, I would like to once again have the musicians come up because I want you to get in Christ. Get out of yourself, get in him. Listen to this. Paul stating, he said, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms and with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will and to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, in him, we were also chosen, having been predestinated according to the plan of of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed and you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. It's all in there. But you need to be in him. Because in him implies security. You have security. Philippians 4.19, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. It implies serenity. John 14.27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be fearful. And we need that serenity in the time that we're living in, my dear brothers and sisters. Our minds are going topsy-turvy. They're spinning out of control. Why? Because we're looking at that world instead of looking to him, the author and finisher of our faith. I learned that. Security, serenity, and finally supply. Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. We're Christians. 
I hope we are. I hope you understand what I'm trying to get to you. Or maybe it's just the musings of an old man. But can I tell you something? In the 43 years that I've lived for God, both my wife and I, (laughs) we have never been forsaken. I can say with David, I have been young, now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor my offspring, nor my offspring begging for bread. My challenge to you today is, can you get outside yourself? Can you begin to take more of God on his characteristics, his joy, his love, his peace, his forbearance, his forgiveness? Can you take all that on? Can you be a different person? Yeah, yeah, I I know. Some of us have had a bad past. But I told a class that I taught yesterday, don't live in the past. Live in the present and stretch towards the future. Shall we stand? I'd like to end service the way we started it. Come on up, guys. And gals. We're having a powwow here. I know it's, it's impolite for the speaker to turn his back, but just give me a moment. I learned this many years ago, and please don't say, please, please, please. You can talk to your pastor after this, and he won't have me anymore, but (laughs) don't say that's not me. I get so tired of people saying that. I really do. Here's a guy that couldn't go into a restaurant. He couldn't eat in public. Here's a guy that could not public speak. And I said in the beginning, Okay, we're not all the same. But one thing is for sure. If we take on the characteristics of Jesus Christ, we're different. We're different individuals. We act different. We talk different. We see things different. We have relational things that are different. We're not the same. So please, don't say that to me. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Huh? I can. I know that whatsoever state I am, they're with to be content. So if you've got troubles today, praise your troubles away. If you've got issues, let God take care of it. What he wants right now is for you to loosen up, sing some music, let the spirit touch your heart, and get carried away. And some of you baby boomers, I know what you did when you got carried away with some of that music from the 60s and the 70s. Huh? Ah, come on. You do those steps and all that stuff. Why not do it before the Lord with his music? Amen? So, Father, we come before you right now. We open our hearts. Lord, we have learned some things and we want to put them in practice. So, God, touch us right now. Deliver us. Free us. Heal us. In Jesus' name, amen.